Hello and welcome back to Space Angel Days. In today's video, we'll look at another Spider Meg that's all fully working with his legs so you can walk around on pretty much any surface and slowly make your way to your destination. So this is called the Mechanized Tank Destroyer, which is well this glorious thing sitting right behind me, armed with a railgun that's been fully set up on a rotor on a hinge so you can move this thing around and precisely target your enemies and blast away. You move down just a little bit, press F10 to find it in the spawn menu, the Mechanized Tank Destroyer. It does have another name, but I didn't actually know how to pronounce that, but there it is right there. This thing is 1,277 small blocks, using the Wayland Warfare 2, Tom Tom Sparks of the Future, and Heavy Industry TLC packs. We've got a nice bit of information about it, so it states it's not a hop drop version, so if you were to say drop this off from a ship to, well, land on the ground and go to assault an enemy base, it's not going to do very well because it doesn't have any kind of parachutes, and the thrusters it does have on there, two atmospheric thrusters, are only there to help it get up a hill. Which I suppose you can easily rectify by adding them on yourself. That's entirely up to you. Anyway, giving this thing a thumbs up, we're going to move around towards the very front. Have a good look around the outside. Then we'll go and test it out. And I'll show you how the legs work, how the leg controls have been set up. And what you can and cannot do with this. So at the very front for the mechanized tank destroyer, what we can see is a bunch of lovely light blue blocks which are well acting as an eye for the spider. You can't actually see in and out from this area, the cockpit is entirely dark, so if you did want to see from outside, you either need to attach on a camera, or use the third person view. Above there we can see our railgun, which has been set up on a rotor, that allows you to spin around, and while well, blast your enemies. We can see two merge blocks, which is how we're going to attach this onto a ship, make sure it's nicely secured in place. And all the way up to there, we can see a red light, making sure you can always find this thing. If we to move down onto the side and over to his legs, we see how the legs can set up. So we've got ourselves a hinge, it's currently sitting on a secondary hinge, which has going to move all the way backwards and forwards, and of course up and down. These then come across onto a secondary hinge, attach onto a secondary section of our legs, they'll eventually come all the way down to this part, which is our little foot. The foot has no magnetic place on there, they are just simply steel blocks, so it will slip, it will slide around, and could prove a bit of a problem when going up a very steep hill, but that is why those amateur thrusters are on the back of this thing. We ran onto the side, we can see we've got four legs on both sides, so we should be able to move around at quite a nice pace, and if you were to lose one or two legs, it's not going to be an issue at the end of the day. Getting a bit closer to the main body, so we can see how the railgun has been set up. So we've got a lovely little guard there to protect the hinge of how it's going to lift up and down. Around 40, very back of this thing, here we go. That's all we can see. So we've got a small little storage crate area where we can pretend to put a few bits and bobs inside there. You can't actually put anything behind it because there is some neon tubes just covering up this area. If you did want to, you could remove this panel and slap on some cargo containers if you did want to take a few bits and bobs along with you. Moving down to here, here's your dual atmospheric thrusters to help give this thing a nice little boost and to help speed up when it's going uphill. And all the way up and looking down, there we go, we've got a passenger seat to sit on. They've even got a small little table for them to well put some clan cola on there or to maybe put TV so they can watch something while you're moving along. Of course, at the back here, here is our turret that's got remote control for you to take over it from the main cockpit. And then down to here and looking up, you can't really see too much. There is the rotor sitting right down there to allow it to spin all the way around. If we move all the way up and look down this thing, there we go, that's simply how the gun has been set up, now the seat has been set up. Then moving along towards the front there, there's our merge blocks, and there's the very front power going to get in and out, right through that little slit for the bar the window blocks. Come all the way down underneath this thing, here we go, not going to be able to see too much, because it is just a bunch of steel blocks with one load connector in the middle there to dock it up and of course to resupply this thing. And there we go with the outside. So that was a brief look around the outside of the mechanized tank destroyer. Now without further ado, what I'm going to do is grab hold my character and actually show you this thing walking around. So coming up to here, we just need to be a little bit careful. There we are, we now enter the seas, and this is all we can see from a first person view. So we just about see outside from where our legs are be moving around. So right there is the hinge. But looking down, there's our screen. And then looking up, yes, like I said, you can't see from the outside. Anyway, third person view, bring up the HUD. These are the controls we get. We've got one, two, three, four to actually move this thing around. Five is a master toggle on and off, because that's the only way to make this thing properly stop. Number six is for your boosters to help you get up a hill. The number seven is to take over the railgun on the top. There we go. So to get this thing moving, all we got to do is press number five. That now activates the leg system. Then we've got one, two, and three, and four to change directions. Number one is going to be to make it move forwards. Number four is going to make it move backwards. Then we've got number two, number three to make it move left and right. So pressing number one. We're not going to start up, that's simply how it walks around. And yes, I know we're moving towards a sheer cliff, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Now if we want to say turn left, we now hit number two. 
and it's going to start to turn left. Looking at from above, that's simply all it does. It slides around, there is quite a big risk of damaging the blocks on the legs, but through my testing, it doesn't really seem to be too much of an issue, unless you're doing something very reckless. But yes, once you finish turning left, all you gotta do is press it again, and now we start to move forwards once again. If we were to move right, we simply press that, he'll turn right, press it again, and he'll stop. If we want to move backwards, however, we simply press 4, and he'll start to move backwards. If we want to make him move forwards again, press number 1, and then he'll start to move forwards. There we go. Oh, he might get in a bit of a pickle there, which is one of the problems I did have when testing this out. Because it seems like if you were to press the wrong combination to the wrong time, you will end up with this situation right here. So what I am going to do is pop out of here, spawn in a brand new one, and we'll go do that one more time. Here we are in the brand new one, pressing number 5, pressing number 1, and here we are marching forwards. Pressing number 4, we now reverse this up. Then we simply press number 4 again, which is where I went wrong with the previous vehicle. And now we are once again charging along towards our doom. We now press number 6 to speed this thing up. Give it a nice bit of speed. Here we go, we're now charging up above 15 meters per second. We are now charging all the way along. Look at us go. And we're now going over the cliff edge. And hopefully we don't damage this much. We are going to damage it a fair bit. But here we go down the edge there. There goes the cockpit. And there goes the rest of the spider. We're just going to follow it all the way down. And it looks like it's still sort of in one piece. If you want to, you could salvage that thing. Maybe slap on some wheels. Or just try and repair up its legs. There we are. We've lost two legs on one side. we lost a lot of its feet all the way around it. But he's still marching along there. He's doing a bloody good job. But he's damaging himself below the belly. And well, that is that for that vehicle. And here we go in a brand new one to finish off this video. So yes, all we can do is march this thing forward using the controls on a halt bar. There is no way to actually move this around with your mouse or to use space bar. Your thrusters will only propel you forward. And well, if you do need to do an emergency turning, you are going to be heavily reliant on the speed that it can turn, pressing 2 and number 3. But as for that, that is pretty much it. All the mechanized tank destroyer has to offer. It's a lovely vehicle to use in your world. If you want to have something slow moving and very nice to use, very easily upgradable with, say, parachutes or more thrusters, and you can also replace the gun on top with, say, a scanning turret or anything else you can think of. So there'll be a link to the description below if you do wish to download and play around with yourself. I highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.